Um, today I'm warping my PVC pipe loom to use for a bead tapestry and I'm using two warp coils. I had made another video on how to make simple warp coils. I had wanted a Mirix loom and I just can't swing one right now so I'm using my PVC pipe loom and that's why I made uh, simple warp coils in order to make this simple loom um, more easily warped for bead tapestry. I have attached, if you have one of these looms, um, and obviously you might find this interesting, if you don't have one and you want to build an inexpensive loom, the directions are online, but they're also in the book called Kids Weaving by Sarah Sweat. It's a very good book. Um, I highly recommend the entire book. The, the instructions for making the loom are in there and for warping it. And if even if you check the book out of the library, um, I'm using warping method two, which includes using a heddle bar, which is right there. You'll have to excuse the clutter behind the loom. Um, I have one warp coil attached to the heddle bar and I have another warp coil taped under the cloth bar. And in warping method two, it gives you an extra long uh, warp, double the height of the loom. What you do is you start at the warp bar, you tie your thread on, you go down around the back of the cloth bar, up over the top of the loom, down to the front, uh, behind the warp bar like that and then back up and you keep doing that across. And I need um, 72 warps for a 5 inch wide bead tapestry and these warp coils will help me keep the thread, especially on the bottom here, as I'm warping this it'll help me keep the thread organized. Um, I'm using cotton um, quilting thread as the warp. As I'm doing this, I keep the warp thread very tight. Um, I'm using um, it from the spool of thread and I keep it very tight. And as you can see, as I come um, around the bar, each thread, each warp thread is going into a slot of the warp coil and uh, it's keeping the thread much more organized than when I tried to do it without a warp coil. The same on the bottom as you can see there. Um, I have Velcro straps holding the cloth bar, um, pulling it in the downward position uh, to keep everything taut. And I have wool, just wool, um, strung on either end of the cloth bar to pull the cloth bar um, in the up position. And what that does is just keep the cloth bar stationary while I'm warping the loom. Um, I'm almost done warping this now, and I will have warped this loom in under 20 minutes. Um, and that's simply because I'm using warp coils. And um, you can see the threads right there, the spool of thread, as I uh, take a little break from this. Each of my warp coils has 75 uh, slots. I made both of them the same length and this this one is taped to the warp bar and this one is taped to the cloth bar. And as you can see uh, the threads are going in the warp coil and this is just so much easier than doing it without a warp coil because at this point the tension would have changed on the thread everything started to slide around. It was It was difficult. But 20 minutes and you can warp this loom um, for a bead tapestry. I have also used this loom for sumac tapestry weaving, uh, traditional heddle weaving, regular tapestry weaving, and now uh, bead weaving. So this one loom can do just about anything and um, it's not pretty, I guess, because it's made out of PVC pipe, but um, it's very versatile. It's portable. It's light. Um, it's uh, 
it would be great for workshops. Um, it really is replacing a lot of my other looms. And once I um, have finished warping this, I'm going to do 73 uh, warp threads for 72 beads. On this particular loom, this is actually where the where this warp bar is is actually the heddle bar area. If I had wanted to uh, use string heddles to do bead tapestry, the method that that Merrick uses on their looms is that each warp thread is actually double, and you then put a string heddle on one of those two threads in each slot and you weave beads in a traditional um, heddle, string heddle method. Um, when you're warping this loom, you take your warp bar and you put it in the heddle bar area. I've got it taped in place so it doesn't move around on me. When you're done warping, um, you put your heddle bar back in place like that. So you could... Um, if I wanted to use heddles, I could have doubled the warp strands in each slot and uh, put string heddles on one um, thread of warp in each slot and done traditional weaving only using beads instead of fiber. And obviously I can do the same thing using fiber and, and traditional weaving. Um, so this has taken me only 20 minutes to almost completely warp the loom and when I tried the first time without um, a warp coil it was a half an hour before I realized that all the threads okay and there it is 73 warp threads for 72 beads I had tightened the velcro straps the tension is very tight on this um, I'll probably have to adjust them again what I do now is I untape this and I move the warp bar down to be just above the cloth bar and um, you would start your bead weaving right above the warp bar and this gives you quite a, well the loom is 36 inches tall um, but I think I have about 22 inches of warp on either side so this would be around a 44 or 45 inch long tapestry by about 5 inches wide. Um, I removed the, the two strands of wool that I had holding the cloth bar up and this is now ready to be woven on for a bead tapestry and I'm, I'm amazed that it only took me less than 20 minutes to warp this loom uh, for a bead tapestry. I've moved uh, the warp bar down and um, I just have to tape the, the coil in place a little bit better. I used masking tape. Um, I'm not going to be using the heddle bar so I've moved uh, these would normally hold the heddle bar. I've moved them up out of the way and I can start weaving. Um, because when you start to weave a uh, bead tapestry, you have to use each of the warp threads in the front. Um, I've placed, I just scotch tape a piece of leather in between the front warp threads and the back warp threads. And that just makes it easier for me to um, put a tension stick in here with using only the front warp threads. And so then when I go to do the first row of beads, you can see I, the threads are more likely to line up and it'll be easier to put the beads in place. The batteries had died um, a few minutes into the, or a few minutes ago in the video, and I had just been saying that it was very frustrating warping a bead tapestry on this loom, or probably any loom, without having a warp coil. Okay, I finished putting that tension bar in, and as you can see, um, it makes it easier. Um, when I go to put the first row of beads in, the first thread on the left and the third thread on the left need to come from the back to the front, 
and the second thread and the fourth thread are in the front and they need to be pushed a little bit toward the back to put um, four, well actually three, um, beads in place right there. So that's why you put the, the tension stick there so it's easier with your first row of beads to just push from behind um, not only the beads but the warp threads and uh, get your first couple of rows strung. Where, the, where I scotch tape a piece of leather, um, you could also, if you were working from a design, a drawing, a painting, um, a model, whatever, whatever you had, you can hang on the back threads. There's a little gap here. This is a bamboo stick that I use as a warp bar that I happen to really like this stick. And uh, what it does, as you can see, is it forms a little gap in my warp. Once I get the first two rows of beads in, uh, or even really the first row, that's not going to matter at all. And the um, gap will only be down here. It won't be above. Now, if I want fringe, I have to move this tension stick up higher so that the amount of space between where I start, which is just above the tension stick, and the warp bar is the amount of fringe that I want. On this loom, you can move the warp bar underneath the cloth bar. Uh, if you wanted, say, 15 inches of fringe for some reason, you move, you start 15 inches up, and you can move this whole warp around the cloth bar just by um, pushing the Velcro straps out of the way and just working the bar through underneath the cloth bar. But I want about that much fringe, which is about four inches. So I will start beading just above the tension bar. And like I said, this gap won't be there once I get the first row in.